Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Let's get underway here. Uh, market conditions, uh, overall bullish in a bull market. We're certainly towards the upper end of that range. I'm going to spend some time talking about that here as well and some considerations for uh, retracement, reversal. Um, if, if we're going to go lower, potential crashes. Also, some, uh, some bullish perspectives as well. So we'll uh, spend some time going over that just because we're at this area where it's uh, it's we're getting pretty lofty <laughs> pardon me getting pretty lofty in this in this overall uptrend and one of the things to be aware of is this line right here i explained this i think it was on uh, tuesday's session that this is the one year time frame of the long term trend so when this crosses over one way or the other if it crosses over back to the upside we we start bullish momentum or we're in bullish momentum at that point likewise if we get a crossover to the downside bearish then we are in bearish momentum as well now these are momentum type of indicators and they're so and they're very long term and very slow so so the market moves a lot faster than this indicator so what could happen potentially is what we're looking for though is we're looking for those extremes to start to top out and then potentially even start to flatten or reverse and and or space okay the distance between that crossover point and where we're at right now so the distance essentially from here to here but not in price in this indicator as well and we're at 20 and that number is typically posted right here 20.05 okay the rank of the bull market this is the rank of that bull market when it gets to this level, and I've mentioned this before, it, it, it's, it's only been here two or three times in the last 20 years. And so uh, we are, we're, we're definitely uh, extended towards the upside. If we look at this move here, you know, this COVID move that we had, and even this move here, you know, pre, pre COVID, this was, this was the move after COVID. We, and it happened so fast that we got a reversal and then we immediately got another reversal. That's referred to as whipsaw. Whipsaw is when you get one signal one direction and then it immediately turns and heads the other direction. And we've seen that throughout a lot of this bear market or excuse, excuse me, bull market where we get a, a turn down, it doesn't materialize. We get a turn back up and we're able to profit from there. We get a downturn, it doesn't materialize. It's the trend shifts and then this lasts for two or three years. This one here, this one here, we had some volatility with COVID. This one here, this one here. So the question now is if we're to look at this chart and try and, you know, try and anticipate what net what's next, then you know that's obviously hard, but the anticipation of what's next based on where we're at right now we are definitely extreme towards the upper end of that range. What does that mean? What does that mean for uh, the market? What does that mean for individual investors? Well, it means something different for everyone because it depends on how you're allocated, it depends on how you're positioned, it depends on what you're buying, and it depends on uh, the position size that you've got uh, and the cash that you've got. It depends on a lot of different things. But in terms of this, one of the things to be aware of is that when this starts to happen, we start to get towards the upper end of these market conditions, that the, the, the risk of reversal obviously starts to become higher and higher and higher. Now, trying to pick a top has cost a lot of people a lot of money <laughs> over the years, me included. I'm not a very good top picker. I don't like to because the overall bias of the market is always higher. The overall bias of, of, of a business is always higher. Hey, businesses don't go into business to say, ah, oh, let's see what let's see what kind of you know half-assed business we can run, or what kind of you know non-profitable business we can run, or non-growing business we can run. That's not that's not why people go into business. That's not why companies uh, exist. Companies exist to be profitable, to make profits, and to grow. If they don't, particularly public companies, a public company is a company that has a share price that that individual investors are able to buy and sell those shares and ultimately create a marketplace for the current valuation for the price discovery of that organization of that company so as we're buying stock we're essentially voting with our dollars that we believe that the company and the ideas and the profits and the growth and all of those things are continually continually moving to the upside that being said our greed and our and, and our and our want for things to go higher um become too excited sometimes we get we get a little bit too 
um, caught up in the bidding process, in, in the buying process, because it starts to work, it starts to feel good. And we, and we think that's gonna last forever. That just doesn't happen without some kind of, you know, consolidation, sideways pattern, uh, or, you know, a big deep retracement. We haven't seen that. And these are, these haven't been really significant. They, they were, this one was, this one was pretty painful. Um, so is COVID, but it lasted so fast that I don't know that any, anybody really felt it. It was like three or four months that it reversed and then immediately was back to where we were at. Uh, so depending on, you know, the strategy and methodology utilized there. So, so in my point being, be aware of where we're at in this trend and allocate accordingly. That might be, you know, if you, if you've got 401k money, that might be, okay, I'm going to reduce my exposure to stocks. And, and the way to reduce your exposure to stocks is to change your balance, change your allocation from more stocks to less stocks. And typically that's a percentage adjustment, you know, say I own 50% or 40% of equities and, and a certain percentage of equities, and I have the rest in a balanced fund or the rest in cash or the rest in bonds, something like that, something that is non-correlated to the stock market. And, and because the stock market includes volatility and that volatility can last months, if not years. And so we've just experienced the last year and a half, 18 months, we've experienced a lot of those things. We've experienced some downturn, we've experienced some rally. So this last, really this last nine months has been this overall uptrend and the economy has been great, improving. We've got new technology in, in AI that is creating a lot of demand for that product, a lot of buying happening out there of chips. We know the story of NVIDIA, uh, but we also know that when we have these you know, generational type ideas like the internet, like um, TV, like radio, like automobile, like, you know, AI is going to certainly fit into that category that we get ahead of ourselves. And oftentimes we buy up, or I should say the market buys up anticipation of something. If, if, and when that anticipation starts to fail or, you know, meaning let, let's say that, you know, AI kind of fizzles, let's say it doesn't turn out to be as cool as everyone thinks it is. And we start getting proof of that stocks are going to sell off because the the anticipation is that ai is going to be doing our dishes and cleaning our cars and shining our shoes and making our beds and you know the, uh, at least i think in the i think in the back of our minds it's like wow what are all of the things that that ai can be doing for us and investors are buying it buying up these companies like crazy in anticipation that they're going to be very profitable because ai is going to make them more efficient less employees that means less cost Okay, or robot, you know, a robotic system. It makes things work 24 seven. There's no shifts anymore where people can make mistakes or so. So that mindset of having like fully aut a fully automated type of system where machines never sleep and they take over the fulfillment, they take over the optimization and or orchestration of a company, then that is what buyers are anticipating. If, if that doesn't happen the way that we are all anticipating, stocks are gonna sell off. Now, that always becomes a part of the, the ebb and flow. We always get these, you know, this massive run up and then we get some reversal once reality starts to set in. I don't know what that's gonna look like or when, but we're at a range where even just selling, selling creates more selling. And once selling starts, then fear selling starts to kick in. Once that fear selling kicks in, then you get momentum acceleration to the downside. Okay, and it, and it starts to feel like this. So a big crack, something like that. Well, if you look at, you know, if I were just to draw a basic trend line to this overall uptrend here, it's not, not gonna be very, oops, not gonna be very uh, straight. But if I were to draw something like that, we broke down through that trend line, we counter trended up to it. Right around this area, we have opportunities, okay? But look how deep that retraced before we have opportunities to anticipate either more upside or reversal. So right now we're just not in that state yet. We haven't had a real big collapse to, to break that trend line or crack that trend line, or even having some support areas right here. This chart is of SPY, which is the, the ETF for S&P 500, okay? So, so we still have some time. We still have some time to help solidify our mindset on how do we wanna be allocated for any kind of a reversal but how do we still take advantage of the upside as that's taking and that's just that that has everything to do with 
position size and percentage allocation towards equities. What percentage of equities are you going to own? What percentage of cash or other you know, non-correlated assets? A non-correlated asset to the stock market is something that moves in opposition to the stock market. Cash really doesn't move in opposition. It just doesn't move, right? It just stays flat. It's essentially a riskless asset uh, because you, you have no risk of losing your capital you do have risk of losing your purchasing power when inflation is increasing the cost of goods and services that our money is buying. If our money is not growing at the same rate as the cost of goods and services is increasing, that's called inflation and that's called buying power. We can't buy as much stuff because we don't have as much money. And so we're lose, potentially losing money over time if we stay in cash for too long. Now, moving back and forth from cash over a few periods of you know, months, that's, a, that's, a, that's completely fine. You're not gonna deal with inflationary risk in cash unless you leave your money in cash for like five years, a long time, three years, five years. If you're just sitting in cash or CDs or fixed income, then, then you, are, you are starting to deal with inflationary risk. But in the short term, it's 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 prudent. It's prudent to say, I need this money today to live on. I can't afford to have any volatility. I can't afford to, to have losses. Uh, and I'm willing to sacrifice potential upside return for that safety by sitting that money in cash. So that's step number one. Step number one is deciding what, what does my short term look like? What does in the next three years, five years look like for me? Can I afford to have a 20 or 30% drawdown in my equity account? If I've got 100,000 in the market right now and we potentially have a 10, 15, 20% retracement, can I afford to have 10, 15, $20,000 of volatility in my account? Now, yes, if you know that happens and, and but, but you know, you say, and a lot of people say, well, you haven't really lost the money until it's realized. I disagree hundred percent. If it shows whatever you see on your brokerage statement, that is real. That is the reality. Whether you sold it or bought it, because it may never recover and it may only continue to drop if it's an individual stock. If it's something like an S&P 500 um, um, ETF, let me go over to that. So if I'm trading or owning S&P 500, I own 500 stocks by owning this one symbol. So I'm reducing, I'm, I'm diversified because I own this one symbol but it potentially could retrace the when the entire market retraces you know that could drop from where we're at now to potentially you know all the way back down to here if we need a retracement we still may be in an uptrend it may retrace here we still may be in an uptrend it could also retrace here uptrend and continue to, to fall off a table and by the time we're back to here and you realize oh crud this thing is you know this thing is not bouncing it's not reversing then and you're trying to make decisions well maybe i sell now okay, that's not the time to do it right now is the time to be trying to decide how do i want to deal with the risk that is associated with equities okay, equities meaning stocks the stock market also referred to as equities uh, and uh, and the and the risk the risk is not losing everything okay like if you're buying an option and it expires worthless you have the risk of losing everything buying the market as a whole the, the, the chances of you losing everything are slim to none, right? But the chances of you experiencing volatility that may not recover for years is uh, is, uh, is is a certainly certainly a real possibility. Okay, so even after a year, even after two, two years, if I were to look at this two-year chart on S and P 500, and I were to say, could you know, could I afford to have a retracement all the way back to here and potentially have the retracement? and the potential rally take two years, three years, five years, 10 years, okay? The, if not, if that decision is I can't afford to be taking that kind of, I can't take, it, it can't take me that long to recover. If I'm a 25, 30 year old, it's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be trading this and be buying in at different levels and be buying in trading this and taking these opportunities and buying in here and having a retracement. And as that pauses and reverses, I'm buying back in here. Okay, that's how we wanna be able to manage that portfolio. But so my point being, I don't wanna to take too much more time on this idea, but that is make sure that your allocation to equities is within your risk tolerance because that is key. That is that is the only key right now. Because what we're trying to do is grow and preserve our, our wealth, grow and preserve our capital and 
if we need that and if i have 20 years i can afford to have more volatility if i'm using that money right now i need to have make sure i've got a smaller allocation that is in equities and the rest in a place that is sound or or not vol and or not volatile okay like like a cd like a bank account something like that the interest rates on those are decent right now four or five percent because we do have higher interest rates and uh, some just some thoughts to consider we don't always have to be in the market we don't always have to be trading something we want to be able to take advantage of it when the times are good and they have been but we also want to be aware of if we have a year or year and a half of sideways or consolidative type of tra trading um, that can add risk to the cash flow that you may be dealing with and your goals of the future so um, be aware of that currently at these levels now one of the things we a couple of things we want to watch for and that just means right now that means adjusting the allocation while things are still towards the upper end of that range once they start to reverse and they will and we start to get a few days like this and i promise we're going to see some dow down 500 600 800 thousand a thousand we're going to see that those those days will will show up again okay if you just envision that right over here what does that look like well right now we're you know that, that's a void and we're sitting right at this point could it look like this could it be shorter could it be longer like this one over here? That was really that bear market that happened. Who knows? Who knows what it'll look like? But we've got to be okay with navigating that downturn in a way that we're not stressed out or we're not in financial ruin or we're not ha we don't have a, a massive amount of risk that we can't recover from at some point in the future. Okay, enough of that. Now let's talk about, uh, let's, let's go back to this and let's go uh, talk about some of these conditions again. Momentum and breadth uh, sitting right here in this upper momentum zone. Still positive, still showing strength, and we have sentiment, which is this upper extreme range. That's, that's a complacency perspective. Complacency meaning there's no fear in the market right now, okay? And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It can be a bad thing because when fear shows up, it shows up fast. It can show up in a matter of days. Once the selling starts, it, it it starts happening pretty quickly so the fact that we are in this upper range for is forecasting the fact that we won't be there at some point okay it's forecasting that this doesn't last forever it's going to retrace and we're going to have a pullback and there is going to be fear that comes back into the market and we just need to be aware that that's a possibility and how are we managing our overall portfolio to be able to do that buy sell ratio is still looking relatively positive now what's interesting 1.5 on the buy sell ratio. If you look at the indexes, um, index scans right here, and look at the buy sell ratio of the S&P 500, it's almost eight to one. 261 buys or uptrends to 33 downtrends and a handful stuck in hold. They're just stuck in that yellow state, a non-trending state. And this is amazingly bullish, but the, but the buy sell ratio of the overall market is 1.5. So you're getting Dow, and look at the Dow, five, NASDAQ 100 is a little flat, more flat. Russell, you're getting a lot of these big major S&P type companies. I would even call it, you know, S&P 1000 type companies that, that are moving the market, that are still in solid uptrends. So the breadth here is really, really good almost to the point that it's too good now it's 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 reaching those upper levels we've seen this higher though we've seen this 10 12 13 14 so it can certainly we certainly could get one more push higher that pulls all of these even higher but also pulls that buy sell ratio just a little bit higher here as well we haven't seen the expansion we haven't seen this we typically do at market tops and bottoms it doesn't always have to happen but the fact that the that there has not been the real wide participation and that all of this capital is going into big s p 1000 companies um, says that law larger term institutional investors are focusing on those big type names those big companies and there's a lot of small and mid-cap companies that they don't want to what does that mean that means they want a little bit more secure type company less volatility by going into those some of those large cap mega cap type names uh, as well something to something to be aware of now um, let's take a look at the current portfolio uh, we've had we've had a lot of volatility here and 
this ha this starts to happen at these market conditions, these market turns, where we start to see sector rotation, we start to see some things that were working, uh, stop working, this stock actually got stopped out. So here's an example of what's starting to happen on some of these, tr on some of these really big uptrends. Okay, they're not holding, they're not holding that support and continuing higher like they did in this overall this overall uptrend so once that starts to fail and that two three six starts to break we have stop losses in place so that it gets us out of those but as that happens to more and more stocks then we're starting to see again not nat by naturally being stopped out of trades that the market is not rewarding these kind of stocks anymore okay the, the medical biotech a move that is happening here. The market is not rewarding that at this time. And so mo that could be just a, a shift in the overall trend. So what'll happen is the, some of these trades that have, you know, they're in that medical biotech or other things as well are going to start to stop out. And then we at, start to add into, and, and that can happen where we get three or four stop outs a day, but then we're adding one new trade back in per day. Okay, so, but we're getting some real volatility starting to happen in some of these names. And that is, uh, that, that's a normal process to start to see. And it just simply means that we need to start making some adjustments in terms of, we already have a pretty large amount of cash. It may mean that we need to start exiting some of these and reduce that cash if it's an uncomfortable level. If the volatility is too much, and we even at 50% cash, then maybe we need to go to 75% cash. So then this entire piece, and then we've got a different handful of names. Okay, let's look at the ones that may be working here a little bit and see if there's any. We've got a couple of gold stocks here. Let's look at SMCI. So some of these stocks that are they've been really that's actually holding up pretty decent today, 3%. I'm actually going to go through it and look at it this way here so cls a pullback to that 236 that support zone we've got to allow for that range c clbd some uh, a nice pop yesterday it's kind of flat and holding that's a good sign right there as well alpn uh, a good sign we we lightened up some of this position we sold half of this position a week or so ago so that's a little bit smaller position but when you start to see this perspective you start to go from all green to kind of this color game happening right here that's that just means we need to be aware we need to be aware of this stock make sure that our stop loss is in place potentially even start to exit if it's a, if we've got some gains and we're comfortable with starting to sell off some of those positions in those gains we could do that again we could rebalance again based on the the fact that it's like man this thing has done really well for us we bought it right here and now it's sitting right here do we want to let this retrace potentially even stopping us out clear down here or do we want to start to take some of adjust some of those adjustments those can certainly be within your overall trading plan to say i'm just not getting comfortable and the way that i want to reduce my risk is selling my losers okay naturally we're going to get stopped out of losers so that's one way to, to get rid of the losers the other way to get rid of losers is just to say which one are my losers do i need to sell more of them fate for example this one's starting to hover with that scenario so just like i said with that perspective when we start to see that and it's happening right around that 236 and it's starting to flounder a little bit we we need it to hold up we want it to hold up right here and if it doesn't We've got a stop loss set just below that. So some of these are getting close to getting stopped out. Some are getting stopped out. It just also helps us in the analysis to say, oh, this trend is, you know, for for some of these names is starting to weaken. It's not working anymore. Unfortunately, we have to still dip, dip our toe in the water to learn that lesson. Okay, we have to say these these have been working. I need to trade them until they stop working. And in order to know if they're they're the, the only way to know that they're no longer working is to get stopped out of them or to have that retrace and not continue that uptrend. What it could do is it could mean that this uptrend right now, this current trend that was intact is starting to fail and be over and that this overall uptrend could get a deeper retracement. It doesn't mean the overall uptrend is over, the long-term uptrend. It just means it's probably going to retrace a little bit deeper first and retest these and then it may turn higher. I don't want to wait around to play that game. I'm not interested in anything when it drops below that level. 
it's got to continue to maintain this 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 momentum location if it doesn't then we need to exit that and move to cash or move to something else and it's very simple it's cut and dry it's not a hard decision uh, but for whatever reason if if it feels like a hard decision then you've got to you know have a have a meeting with yourself and say why is that why why is it that's a hard decision for me to just sell it is it because i think that i've made a bad decision is it i think that uh, i don't want to worry about taxes or or this or that or the other or like if there's a million reasons why you're not willing to cut a loss you need to you need to figure out why that is in your in your own in your own mind because that's where the problem is and that's the only that's the only person that can fix that is why is it that i'm not stopping out when i say i will why is it is it that i don't know how to set up a stop loss in my brokerage account is it that i'm not able to watch stocks close enough throughout the day you shouldn't have to watch anything with a stop loss in place you know the only time you should have to look at your portfolio is for 30 minutes every morning and make an adjustment and look for new opportunities and then stick to it throughout that trading day with those initial stop losses and plans okay but it's starting to happen right here on some of these names where we're getting some retracement and some of these that we got into just recently relatively newer this one's not as bad but we got in on this entry it's a really nice actually corrective consolidative type counter trend move and it's not quite to that two three six and there's a lot of support right here so this is one where it's like we're not seeing that same view we're still seeing everything bullish right here and we're still seeing it in this upper momentum zone i don't have and, I, and and we have a stop loss set up down here there's nothing we need to do uh, and there's nothing we need to change it it may go higher it may stop us out who knows okay we just don't know what the market is going to do i wish i did that would make life a whole lot easier but I don't and no one does. Uh, and so we just we we trust these overall patterns. We trust these momentum patterns that we're getting lots of participation. We're getting huge momentum at the top of an uptrend with a breakout confirmation. Somebody somebody was very interested in that day. In fact, it was the turnover on that was uh 2.2 million shares, where you know these average number of shares down here are more in that. 90 to 100,000 shares a day. Yeah. So really big volume right here. So we'll see if that holds up support. This is an example of this is what it should look like. This is exactly what a stock that has had a breakout and a recoiling counter trending move should continue higher. And I say should because we've seen these patterns a million times, okay? Over and over and over and over again that they continue higher until they don't, until they stop. And then they reverse, we have a stop out it trades and heads lower and we just move on to the next one uh, let's take a look at another couple of examples and be able to you know see if we can talk about these things so again Q, uh, QB, uh, qbts was our new trade this morning uh or no yesterday actually based on this breakout so we had a breakout bar an interesting rally and retrace and look what it did today it it, it actually opened here let me, let me delete those it opened here, sold off that bottoming tail bar and found support right around that location. Now let's see, let's see if we get continue to find some support. Big volume on both of those days, a little bit lighter so far today, but we're, you know, we're, we've got some time. So that pattern also still looking good, even though we're dealing with the retracement, that's fine. Um, my, um, that we have our initial stop loss in place and if it continues to move higher then we'll adjust those stop losses so as you're going through and making those adjustments and determining okay i'm just i'm just pruning i'm just i'm just weeding so to speak uh, and we want to prune out the ones that are not performing the ones that are losing i've got another one another example right here ngo okay we've we've owned this one now for a long time a long time relative to this methodology and that is i think we bought it I don't remember exactly now, but I think it was either back here, or back here. And so it's just kind of been chugging along sideways and it's starting to give us a little bit of that beginning flounder. Why hasn't it moved? It's an oil stock, oil energy stock. Why hasn't it moved yet? Um, I don't know, but my stop loss is set down here. You know, and it's one of those things like if I'm looking, it just hasn't performed yet. It hasn't moved yet. 
is that going to be a candidate for me to prune, to sell out of the portfolio? It certainly could be if, I, if I'm really starting to want to exit some of the trades um, also. Now, one of the other things you can do is you can tighten stop losses on these winners. So I'm typically using a pretty wide stop loss, but if I said, okay, I'm, I don't like the way this looks, I'm gonna set my stop loss right here now. I'm gonna move it up to that 580 range. And if I get stopped out, and it bounces, you know, so be it. I'll reevaluate them. But in the name of preservation of capital, I want and I want to tighten that stop loss really, really tight. You can certainly make that adjustment. Okay. Just make sure you're following some kind of a methodology so that you're comfortable with that methodology and the risk associated to it. And it's a process that you understand. Okay. Tightening a stop loss is an easy process to understand because you're you're just tightening up closer to where. That reversal point is so that you don't have a deep retracement when one of those show up okay like um let's see here uh, some of these that have had some decent moves clbt okay so this uh, example here when we're sitting at the top of that move and we know that it could potentially retrace all the way back down to here let me actually draw that out because this is um one other thing, I'll bring it up right here, uh, is if if you have questions or comments or feedback or anything, I'd, you know, I'd love some of that in terms of, um, you know, things to discuss, you know, trading questions, um, management questions, really any questions at all and topics to cover. Post those questions on the YouTube video, what recording once that's done. And then I see those, and then I know that it's a question related to that particular video. So if you have questions and you don't, you know, you're not comfortable writing those questions in, you can type them into the YouTube questionnaire as well, and um, uh, and that, uh, and then we can cover some of those things. So when I'm sitting up at this location, and I've got to say I've got to be willing to do this. I've got to be willing for a stock to retrace back to at or near that level. If I'm not then why 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 am i not okay with letting a stock pull back to a point that i understand where my stop loss is and that's my risk location okay i can't answer that question for you that's a question you've got to decide why is it that i can't do that i and, I, and a lot of these times i'm talking from all my own experience as well i know myself and trading pretty well now and i hate retracements okay i hate these pullbacks every single time they they they're painful, you know. You know, it's it's like ah, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just. Sometimes we just want more than than is actually there. But the reality is, it's okay. It's just, it's like it's it's not that I'm worried about the risk of the financial risk or or anything like that. It's just like, why is it doing this? I don't want to see it moving lower, especially if maybe all the stocks in the portfolio are moving lower at the same time. That just creates added volatility. But it has to happen. You have to be willing to take. A, re a retracement. If you're not, then what you've got to do is you've got to shorten your time frame and you've got to sell into strength. Let's say we bought on this bar and we had a couple of big days. You you would have to be selling into that strength at these levels. Otherwise, you're always liable. There's always a possibility of a retracement. Okay? And those are typically healthy. The, the, retracements, the retracements help us because most of the time we will have had some gains at some point, just like this stock, CLBT. Okay, right now CLBT is, has a 31% gain. So, you know, and that's up a little bit. That means that if we were to be stopped out and it moved lower, we're gonna not have a 31% gain. Maybe it's a 26 or 7% gain or a 25% gain. We have to be willing to give back something in order to get the ability to have future upside. We have to be able to hold on to it long enough to let it have its consolidation and then continue to move higher. If it's not in a consolidation, if it's in a full-on retracement, then we've also got to be okay with cutting it loose and letting it go and moving on to something different. That's um, that that should not be considered a stop out. Should not be considered a frustrating event. It is simply just an event. You just it is just a part of the trading day. It's a part of the portfolio management uh, process. Um, I am, let me just kind of summarize again. So market conditions, again, spend some time on your allocation where you're at right now based on 
you know, that this chart here based on this momentum indicator here towards the upper end of that range and, and, and decide what kind of a retracement am I willing to write out? Now, there are other things that we've talked about in terms of being able to hedge your position. We can take some of our cash and we can put that into an inverse ETF as well, something like S, SPXS. I always have a hard time saying that. I don't know why it's a mouthful for me. But this is an inverse ETF where when, when we buy this and the market goes lower, it actually goes higher. Okay, so these are the these are the locations, and it's in a sell signal, obviously, because it's exactly opposite of the of this. It's exactly opposite of S P 500, which looks like this. So you have your buy zone here, and I should have left that open. Actually, I'll do that here so that we can take a look at vector ETFs and this one here. Okay, sell downturn. So I, if I were to buy this and it's and it's inverse 3x, S&P goes down by 1%, this is gonna go up by 3%. Okay, so it's a way to be able to hedge, profit, speculate, do whatever without being short and without using options. You can simply use an ETF, you buy it, you're long, just like a stock and uh, and it will go up. And so in this case, you know, if, market, if the market has a pretty decent retracement and this goes from, you know, nine to 11 or nine to 12, the percentage increase, you know, it might be 10, 11, 12, 15%, but it's at, it's more of a hedge against your cat, utilizing your cash balance for this type of a strategy as well. So selling your, your losers, trimming the, 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 the winners that may be floundering a little bit that you may want to be like, ah, it hasn't moved. I'm just going to exit out of it. Uh, and, and raise that cash. And then maybe I'm starting to use some of that cash to hedge against a downturn. SPXS and uh, SQQQ, this is the technology version of it. This is the, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, uh, that if you're utilizing that as well. Some ideas for you to consider. I'm gonna end on that note. I appreciate everyone's time and effort today and um, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks a lot, bye now.